Hi, I'm Gabriel, and I'm a keyboardist at the Tung Company. Uh, I'm a classically trained pianist, and I like to call myself as a collaborative pianist. Uh, I would love to you know, collaborate with you know, as many musicians from all around the world and in all different kinds of outfits. Hi, my name is Joel. I'm also a keyboardist at Tung. Um, I have also arranged some songs for Tung. I was jazz trained, but these days I find myself uh, associated with many pop acts in Singapore as well. So both of you are keyboardists in Tung and have very different playing styles. Can you guys share more about the differences between the classical and jazz style? Yeah, I think it's probably the origin, like how classical music originated from like the church or religious kind of music. So like we have all the way back to like Gregorian chants and everything. And also, you know, music that was meant for the, the high society, you know, the courts, uh, the royalties, kings and queens. Yeah, and I guess that's very much different from jazz, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, in jazz, it was widely recognized that the birthplace of jazz is New Orleans, USA. And the reason why that happened was because of all these different cultures coming together. And really, um, one of the first people who claimed to invent jazz was this guy named Jelly Roll Morton and he was playing not in, in high society places but really in rather dodgy places like as well. Like the opposite of yeah, what it, yeah. exactly. And it came from um, African American freedom of expression yeah. and finding uh, finding liberty in expressing themselves through pain and through a really dark period in history. For classical music, a lot of it is actually you know, written down. Right. You know, it's uh, passed down generations by, by you know, printing, by mm. writing. And I guess that would be very, very much different from, from, yeah. from jazz. Yeah. Exactly, because uh, in jazz, it's a very oral tradition mm. where we learn through hearing. People seldom were taught jazz through reading but rather they were told, go back and listen to your favourite songs, learn these solos, learn these licks. And then that's how, you know, the, more of the improvisatory kind of trait from, from jazz as opposed yeah. to, you know, uh, written and arranged for a uh, kind of style mm -hmm. more for classical. But actually, with regards to improvisation uh, specifically, I would actually say that there was a time in classical music where there was also improvisation as well. Like, you know, you've got people like Chopin, you've got people like Litz, uh, you know, with all the cadences and that really flourishy, um, flowery solos, it's very, very similar and very close to what you know, a solo gets done by a jazz player. So they improvised yeah. as well? Yeah, they do. And ah. yeah, <laughs> even though there's you no know, all the differences between jazz and classical, I think there's also quite a number of similarities. Yeah. For classical, we actually kind of notate it in Roman numerals. We have numbers for it, like the I and then the I, two eyes and the <laughs> I, know, I, two I, three I, I know. I'm not even good with like English numbers. <laughs> Emotional, damn it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I just want to see the alphabet. Is it major? Is it minor? And then, you know, every now and then, I want to play a minor even though it says major, right? <laughs> yeah. Cause jazz. <laughs> yeah, cause, cause jazz. jazz, exactly. <laughs> The first one is that uh, jazz musicians can't read. You know, there's this old saying, how do you get a jazz guitarist to shut up? You put a score in front of him. Oh no. <laughs> the second one, the second stereotype, which isn't necessarily true, but it's still very funny, um, is that jazz musicians are just never on time to the gig. Because must play behind pocket. Yeah, right? yeah I mean, you're playing behind. It's all the music. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but Joel is, is on time. He, he makes his gigs uh, very good. Yeah, very good example. Very good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> For classical, you no, know, with all this, um, the way that how the music is played, we tend to become a little too serious, too uptight. Um, and also, you know, with everything written out in front of us, you know, it's always hard to think out of the box sometimes. You know, always following the rules. Yeah, I guess that's that's a little bane of playing classical music. You know? <laughs> if you agree with these stereotypes, uh, let us know. Yeah, and you know right in the comment section below. You know, if there's anything else that you know uh, you'd like to share with us. Shall we yeah. like maybe take some time to show people yeah, different versions different. of the same song? So as 
as yeah. you can see, you know, what I did was uh, one of the stereotype, you know, uh, classical accompaniment style with this, is this called the Alberti bass. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, used a lot in like classical era. And also besides the Alberti bass, um, we also have this little ornamentations, right? as they call in classical music, was like that I was doing earlier. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think used a lot in uh, Baroque music and right. you know, use this kind of ornamentations to feel the music, to feel the space. Oh, I yeah. see. For this sure. is uh, my version of it. So you can tell we change the chords a, a lot, which is something that's done quite often in jazz. Um, it's very expressive. It's a it's a lot more rhythmic. I think at certain points I wasn't even playing the melody exactly. Yeah, right. I was taking liberties with mm -hmm. it. Uh, in my left hand, I'm playing these uh, one and seven shapes. Right, right. Yeah, and these are known as shell voicings for us because mm. they highlight the quality of yeah. the chord. Now we're going to move on to the fun part of the video where we have a challenge for you guys. <laughs> Gabriel, you have to play a classical piece in a jazz style. Joel, you'll be playing a jazz piece in a classical style. <laughs> Time to show that you've learned the Alberti bass. Yeah, <laughs> I'll show you how it's normally done first and then I'll try it with the lessons I learned from you, Lao Shi. Oh, thank you, thank you. That's very high praise. <laughs> Well done, well done. Well, I guess that's all for today. Thank you everyone for joining us and don't forget to like, share and follow The Tongue Company on all our social channels. And do let us know what other videos you'd like to see in the comment section below. Bye! Bye! Odilo! <laughs> 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 <laughs>